Hi everyone! So today I'm going to make a short video showing you how I build up white fur on an area of this spaniel dog and I'm using pastel matte paper and I'll show you how I build up the white fur making use of that warm tone of paper underneath. I'll show you how I blend the layers together slightly but still leave some of that lovely paper colour shining through. So I hope you enjoy this short tutorial. So I'm going to use my recent spaniel piece and we'll focus on this area on the, the brown spaniel's shoulder. It's great because it gives you a bit of light being uh, cast on the shoulder and how that disappears off into shadows. And I'm just going to quickly show you, this is my scanned image. And when I zoom right in, we can see in close detail some of the paper shining through, you can still see the green. I'm working on the Sienna colour of pastel matte paper. Here you can see this is the colour of paper I chose. And a couple of months ago, I made a short video all about choosing a colour of paper as a base for your painting. And it might seem strange to choose an orange tone when there's so much white in the dog. But I love using warm colours shining through to add extra warmth to the piece. So I'm going to show you a bit of footage from me working on this shoulder and talk you through how I built up that area and all of my colour choices. So I've sped this up a little bit as it's extremely repetitive. But I start off with some of my light tints but I want to avoid using too much white on this area, even though it's white fur that we're trying to achieve. Anywhere that I see that white dip down into the shadow, I'm going to avoid using pure white there. But in this early stage, I'm using this lovely light colour to roughly mark in the direction of the fur. That's what's really important on this area of the dog. You can see the grain of the fur and how that describes the shape of the shoulder and where it comes down to meet the neck. So at this stage, I'm really using the big fat pastels to make all of those lines in the direction of the curves. And that's really important to me at this stage. I don't tend to come in with a solid ground base as I feel that it means I've filled part of the tooth of the paper and I haven't really achieved any of the texture that I'm hoping to build up. So I like to come in straight away with a bit of texture. You're filling the paper right away with some of that initial uh, feel and texture of the fur that you want to achieve later on. And it helps me plan out where I'll need to add the highlights. So I'm using the bigger sticks for almost the entire shoulder of the dog. And I'm doing very little blending, I'm working on pastel matte paper and I'm finding that a lot of the time I don't need to blend quite as much as I do when I work on velour. So just a, a soft blend into the paper every once in a while. You can still see some of the gaps shining through, but just to soften each layer into the layer of colour underneath. So I'll make my arm go in certain directions just so that I can get the correct curvature of the fur. But still using those bigger sticks, you can see I can get nice fine lines, layer them up nice and close together. And I'm not leaning very hard. These soft pastels put so much pigment onto the paper, it's good to have a lighter touch. And if it takes two or three layers to build up an area of colour that's much better than trying to put it on thickly in one go. It's something that you do a lot, I think, when you're first starting out with pastel, just applying a little bit too much to the paper initially. So try and build things up gradually with a lighter touch. After I've used the pure white, then I come in with something like grey 27 just to feather that edge. You can see that the light hits some of the hairs as they continue down into the shadow area and it just softens that line, that division between 
sunlit and shadow area. But all the time really trying to think about the shape, the curve of the mark that I'm making so that it looks like it's fanning down over the shape of the dog. And this is a great technique for this type of fur, this close together, uh, shorter fur. It's a bit like what my little uh, Spanish bodeguero has, a uh, short white fur. They're a little bit like uh, Jack Russell with long legs. <laughs> so it's a tricky type of fur to create. I'm trying to make my lines all flow nicely. And you sort of get into a rhythm of making those marks. And you'd be surprised at some of the range of colours that you'll find within white fur. So when I go down into the shadow area, I'm looking for colours to warm up some of those areas. And then my highlights will be a little bit cooler than the brightest white up on top of the shoulder. So it's really important to think about your colour choices when painting white fur. Really search for those extra tints and shades within your shadows. And so coming in towards the end with a little bit of highlight colour down in the shadow area and I'm using this cool tone to create. You can see that diagonal line coming down just within the valley of the shoulder there. And I'm just lightly blending that in. But it's a much cooler highlight in there than my bright white up on top. And you can see that I've done a little bit of blending as I've worked, but it's great on the pastel matte paper, you get quite a nice green. And sometimes you can let a little bit of that paper shine through as I've done on this part of the dog. And I'll show you a few areas throughout the rest of the painting where you can really see the effects of letting some of that warm color shine through. So we'll zoom in a little bit on my scanned version of this piece, as you can see really clearly each grain of the paper. And we'll have a quick look at this little area of blanket just behind the dog's ear. You can see how loosely this is painted. I think it literally took me about five minutes just to dot some color in there. And I left lots of the paper green showing. You can see that orange color shining through just about everywhere throughout that, adding a nice bit of warmth. And of course, all of those colors of the paper are throughout this brown dog's fur, which led me to choose this color paper in the first place. You can even see around the eye that I've left lots of little greens of that paper. So I haven't really filled the tooth of the paper. It's okay to leave some of it shining through. But the most obvious place to see the paper color is within the shadowy white areas. And this bridge of the nose, I've been really loose with this in fact, and I've left lots of little gaps in the paper. And this is just a nice way to use the opposite colors, so bringing in your color theory. With these dusky blue colors down the nose, it's lovely to have little hints of the orange paper, its color opposite shining through. And overall, when you zoom out, it stops those areas from looking cold or too gray. It keeps the warmth there and it adds to the 3D uh, realism. So that's how I make use of color choice because I know that a lot of my work looks like I've just covered absolutely every little bit of the paper. But I also do this in velour as well, some areas where I can use the shade of the paper and leave some little gaps. It's a nice way to make use of your paper color. So I hope you find this helpful and maybe it will help you experiment and be a bit more uh, brave with your color paper choice next time you've got a light colored animal to paint. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy pastling.